Welcome back. Let's see. Okay, good. We're good to go. All right. Welcome back to what is possibly the final session of Killer Frequency. I am not sure how long this game goes, but it does seem like we're wrapping things up if any if there's any indicator from the previous uh, session that we had. So we have um, Leslie, the 911 dispatch operator, on her way back. And also, uh, we need to keep Dawn, who is our prime suspect, who is definitely using the name, uh, is a pseudonym uh, for, I believe it's M Maisie something. Um, I, we have the little pamphlet there. I, I was showing it earlier. So hopefully we... We're going to come to a thrilling conclusion here. So, sit back, relax, and let's see how it goes. Best we don't waste any time, then. Let's get back on air. You got it. When you're ready, shut the music off. Bringing you back live now. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say things are looking up. It's almost over. But for now, let's bring in our next caller. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John, is, is he going to be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. We've got him stabilized and resting in a bed. We're preparing to move him to the hospital. Thank you so much. If you hadn't been there, then... God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? It is. I hope you're feeling better now. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg, but John gave me something to take the edge off. So, I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> Take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But, uh, before that, I, I needed to call you. I'm guessing the whistling man is still out there? I'm glad you asked, actually. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about that. Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he alright? He is now. I mean... He was attacked earlier, but this call came after. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason, uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough to hold it all in. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. And then the town just moved on like he'd never existed. What happened that night? I went along with the stupid prank, that's what. Whistling night. Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. We decided to plan a party in the woods and have the whistling man crash it. It was stupid. We each had a role. I was the 
stabbed friend. At the party that night, I left the group for a second. Met our whistling man. Pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone. Started an almighty panic. Those screams. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead. But when I heard her scream... Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean? Oh, yeah. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Her name was... What? What happened? Are we still on air? No. No, we're not. How do we get it back on? I don't, uh... Oh, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Reggie picked it up a while ago in case we ever needed to do an emergency broadcast. An emergency broadcast? Emergency? You know, nuclear war, alien attack, broadcasting a serial killer's location to the cops so we can end this nightmare? Fair point! It's in the storage area in the far back corner, up on the wall. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. I'll see you when you're back. Far back corner. Why is this station so big? That must be it. Boom! We've got power! The whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. Peggy, are you there? Are you... Peggy! I need to get back upstairs. Oh no. Peggy, where did you go? No way. This can't be happening. What the Where's Peggy, Don? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. Got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. I'd rather not, if that's okay. <laughs> oh, Forrest. Huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a... Special guest. The one who started it all. Uh, let me take that out of your mouth and... You crazy bitch! 
let me go. Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. It's all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But even if he crawled out of his coffin with all the money in the world. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. And if he says where that is, well, he knows he'll get it. Wait, then who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallows Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Your son? You mean you... Wait, that, that he... Yes, Forrest. He and I had a son. So there were two whistling men tonight. Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. Hang on. Did you say... Barrel? That... Are you... Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. No wonder Mooney went crazy wearing this. There we go. Marie? Marie Campbell? George's old girl. Oh, well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. Marie Campbell? So, not Don, huh? No, not Don. What are you going to... Uh, uh. Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20 years ago. Listen to me. You... Ah! You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest, I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. Why should I help you? Why should I play any part in this? Because I think you believe in justice. You think this is justice? You have no goddamn idea, Forrest. These people, these people you've been trying to save, they were all in on it. They all knew George was murdered, but... Murdered? Uh, listen, I... I said you speak when you're spoken to. Now... I know you've done some good work tonight in piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. And that's why I want you to interview us. If you say so, I'm not really in a position to argue. I'm happy we have your cooperation. Do a good job. And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. <laughs> I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, and if I can find out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just, uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Teddy, be honest with me, or we're both going to die. Honest? Forrest, I'm trapped here with a psycho. <clears throat> what the hell? God damn it. Okay. Our first team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. What made that night special? That was the night Mooney went missing. We couldn't pass it up. I was just surprised no one had ever thought to do it before. Wait. You mean this was the first whistling night? I... uh... Keep talking, Teddy. 
We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God, who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Um, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky, he was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know. Because I'm a decent man. Is that so? Yes, it is. He came apart one day. Some people do. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life. So, I helped him keep himself together. You... You were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked up at the trees and saw Jason there. Bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man. <laughs> Screaming. George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. Did you ask Ricky if he knew or not? I didn't see any reason to. Why? Because Ricky phoned up earlier. He didn't know anything about it, Marie. What? He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... well... It doesn't matter. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank. How can you still say it was just a prank? Oh, come on! I... Oh! oh. God damn it! You made George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. Oh. the good sense to die earlier. He's gonna regret that. Enough about him. He and George took off running, but somehow we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point, and when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the Whistling Man grabs me. I scream, and he starts laughing. It's, it's just a joke. I could stall for time here. How did you feel in that moment? I felt like nothing was real. I felt small and confused. And... Who was under the mask, Murray? Who was the whistling man? It was Chuck. Chuck Brody laughing away but then he stops and he's looking up at the top of whistling point what was he looking at <laughs> said it what happened next nothing i mean it was just teddy george fell off whistling point How do you know what happened? I saw it. You pushed them. You were up there. You were dressed as the Whistling Man too, and I didn't push him. God damn it! I just chased him up there, and he kept backing up. When I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar! It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. If he'd had any brains, he would have realized 
She's lying. Why the cover-up? My future was at stake, Ash. You know what it's like. People like us are bragged for bigger things. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, Forrest. And then governor. And then, who knows? What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke. Gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should a blip ruin my future? George was a blip? He wasn't a blip, Marie. His father covered it up from there. I searched for George's body all night, but... Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp. I take it that's a yes? Yes! Okay! We own the most of the town. That's it then. Your father was going to run her out of business, unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but... Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. And... I saw. I'm... I'm sorry. If Dr. Sullivan had survived, then maybe... There's no excuse for what she did, Forrest. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper. But no! That coward killed the story. But... Maurice Russell is dead now. When will the killing end, Marie? End? When does it end? You can't kill the world. This has to stop sometime. It has to. It never should have started. He shouldn't have pushed my door down the cliff. He should have been punished. Coming to a stop. At least for now. Here, where George and I first met before he joined the football team. Well, right after he shot the winning throw. Wait a sec. You're at the football field. Jesus Christ! Forest, you. Idiot! We're in the gym at Gallows Creek High! I told you not to do that. Wait! <gasps> He's... dead too now, isn't he? He is. Anyway, I think that about wraps up the interview with Teddy. So... Marie? Where? Oh my god. Peggy! Peggy, it's been so long since I've seen your face. I'm worried you wouldn't come. And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Sister? Peggy, wh what's happening? Why are you even there? Want to explain, Peggy? Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? Well, it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And when you walked in, you found out... That my sister 
is the Whistling Man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... I'm sorry. This has to be a lot for you. I just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Disappeared? I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged Mom and Dad to do something about what happened that night. But did they care? No. They told me to stay quiet. They only cared when they learned I'd been with George. And... And... Uh, Marie, I'm so sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's Mom and Dad I should be seeing right now. But since they're dead and gone, well... I'll have to settle for the next best thing. Next best thing? Do you mean... Someone has to pay for what they did. Murray, please. Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. Forgot. Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She, she kept it here on her desk. What card? The card you made me for my eighth birthday. What does it say then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, M. I... Well, I... Henderson Police! Freeze! No! Henry! Get out of there! Peggy! Ah! We have one wounded, one dead, and we're in pursuit of the suspect. Henderson Police! Freeze! Forrest! Leslie! How's Peggy? She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. I'll be okay. God, Marie! Hey, Zara! I need you to look after Peggy. She needs help. Now. We got here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. <sighs> well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This is Ben, Forrest Nash. And it's been a scream. Well, that's it, folks. That is the end of Killer Frequency. Uh, quite the explosive ending, and as uh, I'm sure you guys saw, poor Teddy uh, completely screwed up there. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure some of you guys are probably screaming at the screen uh, when I, I misguessed that. I I, I could have swore that it was the football field, but I guess, yeah, it was, it was the gym. Uh, yeah, gosh, looking at that board made me feel very self-conscious too i uh 
I missed a lot of people. And it really brings things into focus. But I, you know, I really like the spin on this. I, I wondered if Peggy was behind everything or, or kind of connected in some way. And that's why, like, I was really intent on looking at that, uh, her file uh, downstairs. Uh, and honestly, it was after I looked at that, I was like, okay, well, she, she clearly can't be one of them. And I, I honestly, too, I was, uh, I didn't see the double Whistling Man story coming. Uh, that totally threw me for a loop. So, I, I, yeah, it was a... There were lots of nice twists and turns in this. And honestly, it, there were some spooky moments. I'm sure you probably saw me jump a bit. Uh, if you ever saw the, the cursor jerk suddenly, that was typically why. Uh, but I, I really enjoyed this game. It's such a, a unique concept. Uh, it's really... I really enjoyed it. I mean, considering the indie developer, uh, I'm, I'm sure this was a small team, really making use of a very small setting, very few character models needing to be used. Uh, you know, I, most of this was done with audio, and it was a lot of fun. I really, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. I, I look forward to playing it again at some point. I don't think I'm going to stream that, but. Um, I've been told there's tons of different endings, uh, and uh, I, I also know that, you know, obviously, saving everyone, not saving everyone, um, that I think is, that'd be interesting to explore. I really want to try again at some point and try and save everyone. I think that's going to be really difficult, especially, uh, gosh, the one where, like, the whole party house, all those people having to get saved, um... That was one where, uh, I, I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but I did not realize there was a backside to that friendship, like, form. So, uh, that definitely caught me with my pants down. But, uh, thank you for, for joining me on this adventure. It's been an absolute blast. Uh, we'll say that I've definitely got some other games coming down the pipe that I, I, I plan on checking out in the near future. So, uh... Yeah, keep your eye on the channel, and um, I'll, I'll see you then. Until then, you all take care. It's been a scream. <laughs> all right, take care.